Hello everybody. Uh, today we're going to talk about writing some of the equations that we've been solving. So um, we're going to be dealing with story problems and looking again for keywords. Now these are not ones you have to write down now. These should already be in your notes when we talked about writing expressions and writing inequalities. But it's the same words, just reminders to be looking for these as an indicator of what operation you're doing. All right, so we're just going to go through some examples and see uh, if we can identify what operation is happening and uh, talk about the process of writing an inequality that could be solved to answer the question. Now, as we go through some of these, some of them are going to be pretty obvious. Uh, again, our focus is not on the answer to that specific problem, but what we're doing in order to uh, write and set up an equation that we can solve assuming we need an equation to solve to do it. So for the first one, how many packages of diapers can you buy with 40 bucks if one package costs eight? Now you might initially jump to, oh, 40 divided by eight is five, so it's five. Eh, well, you're right. But again, being able to just find that answer is not what we're after. We want to make sure we understand the process for writing an equation for when it's not obvious. So when you're writing in X an equation, the first thing you're going to want to do is define your variable. So you're going to decide what letter you're going to use and what it's going to stand for. So the thing that I don't know is how many packages of diapers. That's what it's asking, how many packages of diapers. So I'm going to define my variable as D, which stands for diapers, how many packages of diapers. Okay, you can use a different letter if you want. It's nice to use a letter that kind of reminds you of what it stands for. Uh, but any letter will work. Okay, So now I want to think again about what the relationship is. So the packages of diapers is what I don't know. I know how much one costs and I know the total that I have to spend. Okay, So another thing we've talked about at different points with multiplying and dividing is that sometimes you have two parts being multiplied together to get a total. An example of that might be uh, you have you go 10 miles an hour for three hours, right? The number of miles you go each hour is one part. How many hours you're going is the other part. Multiply those together, that gives you the total distance you've gone. Another example might be uh, how much money you make per hour times how many hours you work is the total that you make. Okay. Sometimes you have two parts multiplying to, to the total. Sometimes you have a total. And one of the parts. And to find the other part, you have to divide. So, for, so an example for that, using those same situations, is maybe you're given the total distance you drove, and you want to divide it by how many hours you drove. That would give you how many miles you went each hour. Okay, maybe you're given the total money that you make, dividing it by how much money you made each hour. That will tell you how many hours you worked. Okay. So when it's multiplication division, we want to figure out if we have the total or not. So in this case, that number of packages, how many packages we can get is one of the parts. How much each package costs is the other part. And those two things multiply to the total. So we're given the total, one of the parts to find the other part, we have to divide. So 40 divided by eight equals five. So that's kind of what probably went through your head. Now, when we are setting up an equation, this is not what you want to write. Okay, this is the work we're going to end up doing to get there. But what you want to write is you want to write an equation that could be solved using train tracks, which means you're going to want the variable not by itself to start. So this is the relationship that we're going to use to do that. So if each package costs $8 and you're buying D packages, okay, so those would multiply, those are the two parts that would multiply to 40. So here's your equation that we could solve for this. Okay, How much each package costs times how many packages equals 40 of the $40 that you spent. Notice the variable is not by itself yet. It still needs train tracks to solve. Okay, if you skip ahead and do something like this, 40 divided by 8, 
you don't have train tracks to solve there, you're not isolating the variable, you're just kind of seeing ahead of what you're going to need to do to get the answer. Which is great that you can see that, but that's not the skill we're practicing right now. Okay, if you think ahead, if you do train tracks on here, to, to solve for D, you would be dividing by 8 to undo this multiplying by 8. So 40 divided by 8 will give you the answer. Okay, but writing this is what we're practicing. All right, let's look at another one. At a restaurant, Mike and his three friends divide, decide to divide the bill evenly. To tell you division. Okay. If each person paid $13, what was the total bill? All right, so total bill is the thing that I don't know. So uh, like before, I want to start by defining my variable. So I'm going to say B is the bill. Okay, so let's see what happened. We split the bill evenly between Mike and his three friends. So we're splitting it between four people. So B divided by four equals 13. So when we split it between four people, I know it's $13 per person. Okay. So there's the equation that we can use. You would solve that. You would undo the divided by four with a times four. And you'd get B equals 52. Okay. So $52 was the total bill. Divided by four people is $13 each. All right, here's another one that's super easy. If you just look at the numbers, but again, think of the process. So the recipe calls for seven cups. We need seven cups total. She has already put in two cups. How many more cups does she need? Okay, so we think about the process for this. We have to define our variable. I'm gonna say C stands for cups of sugar. This is how many she needs to put in. That's my unknown. Now we think about the relationship between these numbers. What I already have put in plus what I need to add to that gives me the total. So 2 plus C equals 7. Obviously, when we solve this, we'll get C equals 5. Okay? But being able to write this equation is, again, the skill that we're focusing on. All right, um, let's skip that one. I don't like the wording on that one. All right, let's find another one. Amanda and her best friend found some money buried in a field. They split the money evenly, each getting this much. Okay, so they're splitting evenly. How much money did they find? So I want to know the total money that she found. So I need to define a variable for that. Let's use M. So M stands for the money. Okay, well, if I think of what happened to my variable, it got split between Amanda and her best friend. So split between two people. So if I divide that by two, that would give me how much each person got, which is 24, 28. Okay, so there's my equation. To get m by itself, I have to undo dividing by two, which means multiplying by two. Get m equals six, carry the one, five, eight, four. That's what we gotta go in two places. So $48, 56 cents. Okay. All right, this is another one that's pretty obvious to get the answer to. But again, let's focus on how we get there. So how many boxes of envelopes? So I'll define E is boxes of envelopes. Do not forget to do this to find in your variable piece. It can be useful when things get complicated and remembering what your variable stands for. So E is the boxes of envelopes. Each, each box costs three bucks. So the price per box times the number of envelopes, it's gotta equal 12 bucks total that I spend. Okay, and solve for E, I'm dividing by three, and I get E equals four. So I get four boxes of envelopes.
Alright, let's do this one. Last week, Julie ran 30 miles more than. More than should indicate plus. That's one of our keywords. More than Pranav. Julia ran 47 miles. How many miles did Pranav run? Okay. So the thing I don't know that I want to know is how many miles Pranav ran. So that's what my variable has to be. Okay, and that's kind of what you should always be thinking. What don't I know that I want to know? And then come up with a variable to represent that. So P, I'm going to put Pranav, but it's the miles he ran. I don't need a variable for Julia's miles because I know how many she ran. It says right here, she ran 47 miles. Okay, so Julia ran 47 miles more than Pranav. I'd have to take Pranav's miles, add 30 to them to get up to Julia's 47. Okay, so Julia's number is 30 more than Pranav. Okay, so I have to add 30 to Pranav to get Julia. Okay. So train tracks, I undo plus 30 with a minus 30, and P equals 17. This is measured in miles. Okay, the thing I don't want you to be doing is saying, oh, well, I can just figure that out by subtracting and not worry about this process. We're developing skills on this process because there's going to be most of the problems you're going to see, you're not just going to be able to intuit by looking at them. Okay, it's not always obvious what you're doing to what numbers. It's great to do that when you can, but you need to be strong in this skill first. You can use this when you need it because you will need this a lot. Guaranteed. All right, so do one more. Uh, last Friday, Trayvon had $29. Over the weekend, he received some money. I don't doesn't say how much. For cleaning the attic, he now has $41. So how much money did he receive? Okay. So again, this is what I want to know, how much money. So I'm going to say M equals money. I have in mind specifically that means the money he earned for cleaning the attic. Okay. Well, he had $29 to start. He added that some amount of money, and he now has $41. Okay, so pretty simple equation to solve. I get rid of adding 29 by subtracting 29, and I get M equals 12. So he got $12 for cleaning the attic. Okay, so we need to be practicing this process of defining the variable, writing the equation, and then using train checks to solve it. Okay. If you decided to write this equation as 41 minus 29 equals m, that's not really the equation we're going for. This is, again, showing me the work that you need to do. But do you notice how you don't need to use train tracks to get m by itself because it's already by itself? Okay, All you're doing here is listing. You're kind of thinking a, a, a step ahead. You're listing the what you're going to have to do to get the answer, and then just saying that's equal to your variable. Okay, it's this isn't really useful because you can only do this right away if you can solve it in your head. If it's when you can't solve it in your head, then you probably can't necessarily go right here. Okay, so you want to make sure when you're writing your equations that the variable is not by itself. Okay, so twenty-nine dollars plus some got us up to forty-one. That's where we need to start. Okay, so make sure you don't write this. Write this with the variable not not already by itself. All right, I will let you give it a try. Uh, good luck.